In Luke chapter 19, verse 1, we'll begin there. I'm going to read the first 10 verses. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I hope today you come with a heart to hear the Word of God. I hope you've come today seeking. Some of you have admitted privately that you still have not trusted Christ as Savior. Why not today? You know, we're not promised tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation because there may not be a tomorrow. Zacchaeus was seeking the Savior. If I could title this message, I would, the title of it would be Zacchaeus seeking the Savior and the Savior seeking Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus seeking the Savior and the Savior seeking Jesus. Number one, Zacchaeus had obstacles. Zacchaeus had obstacles. Did I say that right? I said that and I got some people looking at me and laughing. Is that, did I say it right? I am from the Midwest, so that, that must be the problem, right? Ohio. You know, I realized something. I may have been born a Yankee, but I couldn't get down here fast enough in the South, amen? I love the South, amen? Brother Joe, amen? He was from, Al uh, from Indiana. They converted him to be an Alabama Crimson Tide. Can you believe that? I'll tell you, amen. You hear Brother Skip back there? About time he said amen. All right, Zacchaeus. We're going to keep moving on here. Y'all get back in the, in the car, all right? Zacchaeus had obstacles. He was rich. He was rich. You know the preceding chapter talks about a rich man? Go over to Luke chapter 18. The preceding chapter, starting in verse number 18. Luke 18, verse 18. I'm going to slow down a little bit because I want you to see what the Bible says. Get in the Word of God. The Holy Spirit works through the Word of God. You must see what God's Word says. Please turn with me. In Luke 18, 18, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Amen, young people. Amen, older people. And he said, all these have I kept from my youth up. Hmm. Really? But instead of the Lord chastising him all that, you know what he said? Verse 22. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. And when he had heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. 
Now, is the Lord telling someone that they must sell all their goods to go to heaven? No. But any obstacle that you have in your way of coming to Christ, you better let it go. Go back to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Zacchaeus did not let riches get in his way. What is getting in your way today? What is keeping you from coming to Christ? Number two, or point B, I should say, because number one, Zacchaeus had obstacles. B, Zac Zacchaeus, his position did not stand in his way. He was a chief of the publicans. Hey, instead of running after Jesus, he could have told one of his publicans, you go and run to Jesus and tell him I want to talk to him. But he didn't do that. He did not let riches get in his way. He did not let his position stand in his way. What is standing in your way today? You better let it go. He was short. His stature did not stand in his way. I can relate to Zacchaeus. I'm a short guy. When I was in the United States Air Force, and I remember I, I would work on an aircraft, and I got a chance to marshal them out, too. Did a lot more working on them than I did marshal them out. When we marshal them out, we would first start off where the pilot would we'd strap him into the air crew station. And then we would go ahead and check the aircraft out while he would do the flight controls and the speed brakes and, and the engine and all that. Yeah, all that stuff. And, the, and the, doing the thrusts. Yeah, I'm trying to make this simple for people like Mike, amen? But anyways, so I remember one time I got to run an engine up and I told the guy specifically, I said, look, do not photo this. He didn't listen to me. So you know what I did being a nice Christian? I riveted it up. And that guy fell backwards. That's some, that's some power behind those aircraft. But anyway, so you get in and, and the pilot would rev it everything up. And finally, when you knew you had a good aircraft, you'd go to the front and you'd stand there like this. And that means brakes on. Put your brakes on, sir. Because if not, you're going to go rolling. It's not going to be good. So he'd go ahead and put his brakes on. And then when he was ready and he gave me the thumbs up, I'd go like that. That was rev it the engine up. Boy, man, that was a pretty sound, too. He'd rev it that engine up. And then I'd go like that. And then I'd say, okay, come on. He'd start coming. He'd start coming. He'd start coming. And then it'd end like that. And snap. Thumbs up. Sir, you got a good aircraft. I've given you a good piece of equipment. Now go fly, fight, and win. It was great. But one time we had a missile that they put on. And it was a, a, a different type of missile. And, and anyways, they put it on the wing. And this one was a little bit lower. But there was a guy that uh, had been working with me. He always called me shorty, 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 shorty. I said, let me tell you something. I might be short, but God's using me. I can work on part of, parts of the aircraft. You can't because I'm short. He'd say, well, whatever. I said, God made me that way. And so we were out there marshalling. And I forgot about that missile. I did my number and I went like that. Sir, you got a good piece of aircraft. About that time, it barely missed me. But the guy that called me Shorty, he was next to me on the other side. He was launching his aircraft out. He did this, he went like that and bam! He fell over. Do you know, Brother Joe, that guy never called me Short again. He didn't even think about it. God made me short. Maybe you're short today. There's a reason for it. Amen? You know, the Bible tells us, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Listen, Zacchaeus knew he had a problem. Zacchaeus was a tax collector for Rome. Rome said, now, I want you to go out and charge uh, $10, back maybe during that, I don't know, $10 for each person. He said, yes, sir. Come to the first door. Oh, Zacchaeus, how you doing? How much do I owe you? 
$20. Then you go to the next door. How much do I owe you, Zacchaeus? $20. He stole from the people. A lot of tax collectors did back then. He knew it. He knew it. He was a thief. God got a hold of his heart, though. Zacchaeus knew he fell short of the glory of God. But you know what he did? He came running anyways. He wanted to know who Jesus was. The next thing is, the crowd, we're talking about obstacles here today. He was rich. He had a position. He was short, like me. And the crowd hid Jesus from him. The crowd hid Jesus from him. Not on purpose, but he was just short. You know, that's a good illustration, young people. He didn't let the crowd stand in his way. Watch out for the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of sin. In Mark 4.19. Mark 4.19. It says, in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful. Do you know it's hard to hear the Lord when you let the world fill your mind up the rest of the week? It's hard to hear the voice of God. How much time do you spend reading the word of God? You say, Brother Chris, I'm not settled on salvation. Are you reading the word of God? Brother Chris, I want to grow in the Lord. Are you reading the word of God? Zacchaeus said, I'm not going to let the world hide me, keep me from Jesus. You become choked with the cares of riches and pleasures and you cannot hear the voice of God. Young people, can I just say this? Pull those things out of your ears. Listen to God. If you're not careful, you get caught up in your own little world. And if you're not really careful, you'll die and go to hell. There are so many obstacles. By the way, I'm not just talking to young people. I'm talking to older people. Put those Xboxes down. Come on now. I'm meddling today, aren't I? You say, pastor's not here. You're going to get it. Folks, there's so many obstacles. There's so many things that are keeping people from the Lord. Don't be that way. Zacchaeus said, I'm not going to be that way. I'm not going to let riches. I'm not going to let my position. I'm not going to let being short. I'm not going to let the crowd or the world get me. And young people, here's something else to think about. This applies to us all. Don't let your heart get trampled on by the world. When you dabble with the world, if you're not careful, you're going to get bitter. Don't let the world trample on your heart. I've known young ladies and young men that have flirted with the world and they're hurting today. They're hurting today and some of them are bitter. Some of them have new, still not gotten over what happened to them. But it doesn't have to be that way. Even if you have been hurt, this word can clean you up. It can clean that mind. It can help you. It can get you over that bitterness. There's a young lady I knew. She wanted to be a missionary. She got caught up in the world. She said she was saved. She never made it to the mission field. And every now and then I see her and I say, what do you think? She said, Brother Chris, I wish I would have went to the mission field. I wish I would have went. Young people, don't miss a call of God on your life. Zacchaeus, number two, sought to see Jesus and who he was. He sought to see who Jesus was. Notice here, he climbed in the sycamore tree to see Jesus. How much effort are you putting into seeking for the truth? 
Christian, how much effort are you putting into helping others hear the gospel? We don't want them to miss it. I remember years ago, I would get in my car every Sunday and go to church. And finally, a young man came to me and said, listen, you're going to church again. I said, yes. He said, can I go with you? His name was Adam. He came here for a while. They ended up moving to North Carolina. God can use you. The key is, will you let him? The Bible tells us, we're to, we're to, he says right here, Zacchaeus sought to see Jesus, who he was. John 6.40 says, John 6.40. Zacchaeus, he wanted to see who Jesus was. In John 6.40. And this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. When he says seeth the sun, he's not talking about having a vision of seeing the sun. He's not talking about that 90 foot Jesus down there in Rio. Did they, they, I say that right? Y'all help me out what? There you go. I'll take that. Down in Brazil. He's not talking about that. He's talking about seeing Christ and what he's done for you on the cross of Calvary. Seeing his death, burial, and resurrection. What did Christ do? He came as a man. He was born. Listen, he was God. He took upon a body. He became a man, sinless for you and I. Lived a perfect life, was a perfect sacrifice, kept the law for you and I. Then he went to Calvary. You know what he did at Calvary? He died for every single one of your sins. We talked about that in the Bible study Friday. Someone said, Brother Chris, you forgot to mention suicide. He died for suicide too. He died for divorce. He died for uh, murder. He died for it all. Fornication, adultery, lying, stealing. Being religious. Oh, I thought I'd throw that in there. That's iniquity. God can't accept you your way. He must accept you in the way of the cross. And Jesus Christ went to that cross and he died for every single one of your sins. The Bible says, he that seeth the Son, what he did, he died on the cross of Calvary. He paid for everything. Listen, give me thanks to the Father, which hath made us meet or fit or qualified to go to heaven. Do you know that everybody has been qualified to go to heaven, but they got to believe it. He that seeth the Son and believeth on Him. What does it mean to believe? It means to trust, to rest, to fully embrace. You are my only way to heaven. You did it. I know it because you said it, God, and you're right. That's what it means to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. In order for one to come to that realization, they must get serious about the Word of God. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, but without faith. How do you get faith? Right here. I've heard people give testimonies. Yeah, it's in the back of our wall. Thank you, Brother Joe. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I hear people give testimonies about how they didn't know nothing about Jesus. They got saved. Is that scriptural? Because without faith, Without knowledge of God and Christ, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible to please Him. How can we please God? Through His Son. We believe on what His Son has done, and therefore God, we are, our God accepts us, and we please God because we believe on His sacrifice. It's all about Christ. You and I have nothing to do with salvation. But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. And He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Psalms 50 verse 23 says, Whoso offereth praise and glorifieth me, and him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. 
Zacchaeus climbed in the sycamore tree. He ran. He desired to know Christ. Zacchaeus did not want to miss Jesus. Point number three. Zacchaeus did not want to miss Jesus. You know, today might be your last day. You don't want to miss Christ. You say, can that happen? It's happened. You say, how do I miss Christ? By not paying attention. Not listening to what Jesus did for you. Not hearing Him. Listen, I don't know what you got going on later on, but put that aside. Listen to the voice of God. God is begging you right now to look to Him and trust Him. Zacchaeus did not want to miss Jesus. James 4.14 says, Our life is a vapor. I did two funerals this week, back to back. Both of them were unexpected. Well, one was unexpected. Unexpected. Listen, when you miss Christ, if you die without Christ, you cannot come back. It will be too late. You will be lost for eternity. You'll go to hell where there's burning, there's screaming. This is real. Listen, this is real because the Bible says so. Someone says, will you go to hell forever? Can I tell you this? No, you won't. You'll be in the lake of fire forever, though. You'll be in hell for a time, and then you will stand before God, and God will open the books, give you an opportunity to defend yourself, and as Brother Archer has said, there are no winners at the judgment, the great white throne judgment. You don't want to end up there. Zacchaeus didn't want to end up there. He got serious. And then notice as he wanted to know the Savior seeking Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus seeking the Savior and the Savior seeking Zacchaeus. Do you know that God wants you to be saved more than you want to be saved? He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But He will not coerce you. He will not make you get saved. But he waits for you to respond to him. Jesus saw Zacchaeus. He saw Zacchaeus' heart. Zacchaeus got God's attention. God's not willing that any should perish, but he won't make you get saved. But he wants you to seek him. He wants you to be saved. And listen, salvation's simple, but getting there is hard because we got to put away our preconceived ideas. We got to put it away this. I think I can fix it. I think I can figure it out. Throw that away. Count it but dung because you can't. We're talking about the God of heaven that made the universe. You think you can figure him out? You can't. But all he's asking you to do is believe what he said. That's it. Believe what he said. You're a sinner. You can't save yourself. But Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary and died for every single one of your sins and set you free. You know when you're made free? When you believe it. Brother Mike had a good illustration last night. He said they, they captured a wolverine. A wolverine up in, uh, I guess, the Michigan area. Wolverines are pretty mean. They'll hurt you. They kept it, and they were feeding it and all that and, and doing some tests on it. And they said it, uh, they, they went ahead and, and put it out in the woods. And uh, they'd, it'd been with them for a couple months. And they, the cage, they took the cage, and they were really careful because they didn't want this thing to pounce on them. They lift the cage up, the, the, the door to the cage. They lifted it up, and they, they got away. They got in their cars. You know that Wolverine just sat there? You know Why? He still thought he was in bondage. But the door was wide open. Folks, the door is wide open for you to go to heaven. But you still think you're in bondage. You think there's something you got to do. There's nothing. It's already been done. Believe God. Faith is believing God. Jesus saw Zacchaeus. Jesus said, come. Jesus said to him, point number two. He said to him, come down. You come to me. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. 
Come on to me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know what the problem is? Christ wants you to come. But in John 5, 40, it says, And you will not come to me, that you might have life. You will not come to me, that you might have life. Listen, quit trying to make yourself accepted. God wants you to trust Christ. He wants you to see His finished work. It is a work of peace, Isaiah 32, 17. It's a work of forgiveness, Colossians 1, 14. A work that God is completely satisfied with, Isaiah 53, 11. He asks you to come and believe on His work. For by grace you saved through faith, and that out of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus said He was going. Number three, Jesus said, I'm going to your house, Zacchaeus. Jesus went to Zacchaeus. Said He was going to Zacchaeus' house. I'll get that point out right. Number three, Jesus said He was going to Zacchaeus' house. What would Jesus see if He went to your house? Would He see a Bible? Would he see a family that loved Christ? What would he see what your neighbors see? I'm really meddling now, aren't I? Zacchaeus did not try to tell the Lord, let me clean my house up before you come, Lord. You see, this is a picture of religion when we try to clean our own house up without the Lord. Man's efforts, Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Zacchaeus knew he could not clean up his house, but he knew Jesus could. Without Christ, we are condemned. We trust Christ, and He imputes righteousness to our account. That house is referring to our spiritual, our, our, our body, our, 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 our tabernacle. Our soul. Let me say it that way. We trust Christ, and what does He do? He imputes righteousness to our account. We're not righteous until He says so. When does He say so? The moment you believe His record. We're sealed on the day of redemption. Ephesians 1 and verse 13. Zacchaeus ran down that tree, and he received the Lord Jesus Christ joyfully. Oh, the joy of knowing our sin debt has been dealt with by Christ. Zacchaeus knew from that moment Christ was his Savior, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, he became a son of God. Do you remember when you got saved? Do you remember when you believed the gospel? If you're not sure, you got a problem. You need to be honest with yourself and God. Notice the last part as we are getting ready to close. The murmurs in the crowd. The murmurs in the crowd. Verse 7, And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Do you know those folks could have got saved that day too? Do you know why they didn't? They didn't see themselves as lost. Maybe that's your problem this morning. You never come to the realization that you're lost. And you will never get saved until you realize you're lost. My wife and I, we were just gotten to Phoenix, Arizona. <clears throat> it was my first uh, duty station. I've been there for about a year. And my wife, she got there and we'd just been married. And her honeymoon was from Pensacola 4 to Phoenix, Arizona. What a wonderful honeymoon, right? I was, didn't have a lot back then. I've made it up, hadn't I? I've made it up. But anyway, so here we were. We were, we were in Phoenix. I was trying to show the town. And I got lost. And you know what men do when we get lost, right? We're not going to tell, we're not going to tell our, our spouse we're lost. We got it under control. So we drive. She said, you know where we're going? I said, oh yeah, I've been, man, I've been here for a year. What are you talking about? We're driving, 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 driving. And she just kind of looked at me. Kind of gave me that stare. I said, I know where we're going. So finally, I got humbled. And I, I said, I'll be right back. I had to go to a convenience store. Where are you going? I got to use the restroom. I go in there. I said, dear lady, please help me. I said, I have no clue where I'm at. Can you help me? 
Can you tell me how to get back to Luke Air Force Base? And she did. I got back in the car. She said, did you get directions? I said, no. I said, I had to use a restroom. I told you that. And guess what? I just remembered we got to take a left. <clears throat> and sure enough, <clears throat> we went back. But my wife's pretty smart. I think she knew what was going on. She didn't beat me up too bad. Listen, folks, a person that's, that, listen, if they're wandering around and the only way they're going to get help is if they realize they're lost. The only way you're going to get help today is you, if you realize you're lost. The question I want to ask you this morning is, are you a murmur that you don't see your need? Or are you a Zacchaeus? Knowing I have a problem. And I'm going to run to Jesus who I know can and has already helped my problem. What about you today? Let's all stand.